Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be spending some time to continue our Photosphere project. And in this video, we're going to be working on our Skybox controller, which is basically going to be handling the fading between each Photosphere. So what we're going to be doing is creating an interpolator so we can set the exposure of our Skybox, switch the Skybox image itself, and then basically set the exposure again so we can see it. So we're going to be working with a few coroutines and the render settings of our Skybox. It's not going to be particularly difficult, so let's go ahead and let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a couple of scripts. So let's go to our scripts folder. We'll right click and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it controllers. And this is because we're going to be having a base controller class as well as a controller for our skybox itself as well as our audio once we get that in there. So let's first create our script that we're going to be using for our base controller class. And this is what's going to be housing the interpolation functionality that will be shared between the photosphere as well as our audio. And we'll just focus on the photosphere one for now. So we'll call it skybox controller. And we'll set the skybox controller in our scene really quick. So we'll just create an empty game object. We will reset its transform and we'll drag the script onto it. And then we'll just rename the object. And that's all for now. We're going to open up our controller, our Skybox controller, as well as our environment library. So here we are in our controller script, where the first thing that we're going to be doing is writing all the signatures for the functions we're going to need. And we're also going to need to add the namespace for Unity's events before we get started. Then we're going to mark this class as abstract. And that's primarily because we're going to be using a abstract coroutine that's going to be reused for both our Skybox controller and our audio controller. And it's not going to have any information in of itself. Each controller that's going to be inheriting will have its own implementation. And we can get rid of both of these. So let's write the signature for that abstract function. And it's going to be a protected abstract coroutine that we're just going to be calling apply. And we're going to be passing in an environment. So what this is basically going to be doing is receiving an event from our main app manager that we'll be writing in a future video. And then it's going to be applying it to the skybox. So we'll be writing environment, environment. And if you remember, this is that class we created in the last video. So it's going to have the texture for our photosphere, the audio, and as well as our world rotation. So I'll add a semicolon there and we're done with that. And then we'll create another function that we're just going to call a new environment. And this is also going to set get an environment as an argument. And then we're going to be creating another coroutine that we're just going to be calling interpolate. And what this is basically going to do is that we can reuse it for interpolating between photospheres as well as our audio. So we can fade it out nicely, then fade it back in. So it's going to be protected, i.e. numerator, interpolate. And we have a number of arguments for this. We actually have four. So we have a float, which is going to be our target time. So how long do we want this fade to last? A start value. Not a star value, but a start value. And then we'll have our end value. And then once that's done, we'll be passing in an action that we want to occur once it's been, once the interpolation has been completed. So we have a unity action with an argument of a float. And you'll see more about how this is going to come into play once we get to our actual skybox controller. And we'll just call this action. And then we'll just say yield return null for now. All right, so let's write out our new environment. And this is going to be pretty simple. This is what function is actually going to be called from our manager that we're going to be making in a future video that's going to pass it this new environment. And since we're going to have some coroutines running, the first thing we're going to want to do is stop any coroutines that are currently happening. So if we're sort of in the middle of fading to a new photosphere, we want to stop and then we want to continue with a different coroutine. So we want to start a coroutine of apply and we'll be passing in the new environment. Well, not new environment, just an environment. And that's all we need for that. So let's go down to our interpolate, where we're going to be creating a variable called lerp time. 
which will initialize to zero. And then we're going to create a while loop, which is while our lerp time is less than our target time, we're going to be adding to that and then lerping that value from zero to one. So we'll write while our lerp time is less than our target time. We're going to want to put our yield return null within this while loop. And then we are going to want to add to our lerp time do a plus equals time dot delta time. And then we're gonna have a couple of floats here. One for calculating our percentage. So it's gonna be our lerp time divided by our target time. And then our float, which is gonna be final value, which we're gonna be using math lerp to go between, well not Perl and noise, but lerp where we're going to be going between our start value, our end value, and our current percentage. So this is basically gonna give us a value between zero and one, no matter what sort of start value we're giving it or our end value. And this works for both our audio as well as our exposure because both of those are in a range from zero to one. So we don't have to do anything extra for them specifically. And once we have our final value, we're going to check to see if the action we're passing into this is not equal to null and then we're going to invoke it and since this action is going to have a float argument we'll be giving it our final value well actually i think i misspoke earlier i said that this action occurs after the while loop it actually occurs while we're doing it so we're constantly going to be giving it a value so it can apply to itself. And in this case, for our Skybox controller, we're going to want to consistently keep updating the exposure value, which we're actually going to do right now. So let's click over to our Skybox controller. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is get rid of our mono behavior and inherit from our controller instead. And then we can get rid of these two pieces of functionality. And you'll notice we have this little red squiggly line, which because we're not implementing our controller apply environment. So we'll start by writing a protected override coroutine. Just like that, we can get rid of this line. And then we'll create the signature for what we're gonna be needing within this apply function. And it's gonna be the action that we're actually gonna be calling or passing to our interpolator function. So we'll have a private void. And we'll, this will just be an update exposure callback and we'll have a float and it'll be a value and we can actually just finish this simple function out right now because it's just one line and we can do that by writing render settings skybox so we're going to be going through our render settings to the skybox material and we're going to want to set a float on it and that float is going to be exposure so we'll just pass in the string exposure and then we'll be giving it a value so what's basically going to be happening is within this controller interpolator, it's going to be invoking this action here and passing the final value, which is going to be a lerp value between zero and one based on this percentage. And then it's going to be setting the exposure of our skybox with that value. And all of that is basically going to be occurring within apply. And then apply, if we go back, is just going to be this abstract function that's gonna be called when we get a new environment from our app manager. And since we don't have one later, we will sort of write a really quick test input so we can test that out to make sure everything's working. So let's go back to our Skybox controller. So what we're gonna be doing in apply is we wanna fade out first. We wanna set the texture and then we wanna fade back in. And then we'll add a quick debug log here or to let us know that our skybox has been applied. So a debug log, skybox applied, and there we go. So let's start with our fade out. And the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have a float that we're gonna be calling start value. And we're gonna be getting our render settings again, our skybox, get float, not get color, get float. And we're going to be getting the current value of our exposure. So this ensures that whatever value that we're going to be 
interpolating from, we're going to be getting the most recent value. So we're not assuming that it's at zero or it's at one. So that sort of comes into play when if the button is hit while the skybox is already shifting between two photospheres. It says, hey, let's stop the coroutines, let's get the current value, and then let's animate from that value. So it's not going to have a weird jittery thing where it may set it to zero or one. So this is pretty flexible with that. So well, let's get our start value, which is going to be that current exposure. And then we're going to want a to start a interpolate coroutine. So we'll do yield return, start coroutine. And we're yield returning here so we can fade and we can wait for that to complete before setting the texture. So if we didn't yield return this particular coroutine, it would start and then the texture would get immediately set, which kind of eliminates the whole point that we're doing this. So let's start a new coroutine of our interpolate. And let's pass in our four arguments here. So I wanted mine to last a quarter of a second. So I'll put 0 0.25. We'll have our start value, which is going to be the value we just got. And then I want the end value to be 0. So when our, in, when our exposure is 0, it's going to be completely black. So we'll write 0.0f. And then for our action that we want to be setting while we're interpolating, it's going to be that update exposure callback. And that's all we need for that. So this basically is going to fade to black. And then we want to set our texture. So we'll be going through our render settings again. Our skybox, set float. And if you remember, we have that world rotation variable within our environment class that we created in the last video. And what we can do is we can set the float of the rotation value in the shader. So when we get our environment and we'll get its world rotation and we'll apply it to the skybox material. And then we want to set the texture of the actual skybox. So we'll do render settings, skybox, main texture, and we'll be setting it from our environment and we'll be getting our background. And that's all we need to do for our texture. So now, once we've faded to black, set the texture, we want to show the texture now. So we'll be setting up our start value again. We'll do our render settings, skybox, and we'll be getting our expo current exposure again. And then we'll want to call another coroutine to interpolate. So well, let's just copy this. And we'll want the length to be the same. We'll be using our start value. But instead of our exposure being 0, we want to set it to 1. And that's pretty much it for our Skybox controller. Now, this is pretty much all the code we'll be needing in this video, but I would like to test to see if it's actually working in Engine. So I'm going to add some pretty quick code in our environment library to see that it's working. So if we go to our environment library, I'm going to create a quick public variable for our skybox controller. So it'll be a public skybox controller. Just call it skybox controller. And then we'll create an update function really quick. And like I said, you don't have to write this right now, but if you want to make sure that you've done it correctly, just copy this down, see if it works, and then remove it since we won't be needing it in a future video. And then we'll create an update function. And this is basically to see if we're going to press a button, we can actually fade in between two, two textures. So we'll just write if our input get key down. And I'm just going to use the down arrow for mine. We'll be getting our skybox controller, new environment. And we're putting this in the environment library since we already have really easy access to our list of environments that we set up in the last video. So we'll write M environments. And right now, I think it's already set to the first texture within the environments list. So I'm going to set it to one so we can see that we actually got a difference. And I think that's all good. Let's go back into Unity to see if this works. So let's first go to our environment library so we can set the reference to our Skybox controller. And then let's hit play. Now let's just clear out our console really quick, click into view, make sure it's running, and then let's hit our down arrow, and it's faded to black and it's gone to the second environment in our list. And we can see that down in our console we have our skybox apply debug.
But I think that about does it for this video. If you have any trouble or problems or questions or anything, feel free to leave them below. And then I think in the next video, we'll work on our audio controller and actually start on the sort of main event that's going to be driving all of these controllers. Hopefully, we'll see how far we get. But until then, I'll see you next time.